Hey everybody, today I've got a Vostok Amphibia 710-059. So it's a 710 case style and 059 for the dial. And this is really an interesting piece. I don't know of many watches that have this kind of fascinating history for under a hundred bucks. And this watch is under a hundred bucks. I believe, how much did I pay for this? Uh, shipped from Meronome, it was, I think, like $78 for an automatic watch that has military credentials, that has uh, the history that's even been to space. I mean, it's kind of one of those crazy values that you get in uh, this hobby. So I'm happy to show it off today. So let's start with the dimensions. So this case, I got it because I really love the dimensions. It's got a 41 millimeter diameter. It's 15 millimeters thick. It's got a 46 millimeter lug to lug, which is great. So you get a bigger dialed watch, but a reasonable lug to lug, so you don't get a lug overhang on your wrist for most people. And you've got a lug width with a pretty standard 22 millimeters, which I think works great with this 40 four millimeter case. And as you've probably figured out, I've changed out the bezel, and it's really easy to find bezels for uh, these amphibias. And I believe the bezels also fit on um, their hand winding models. So you just, you've got a lot of variety, but I, I picked the ceramic bezel because I liked it over the uh, chromed brass bezel that came with it. And most of the Classic amphibia models come with a chrome to brass. I think some of the newer ones, the, uh, is it the 410 case style, I think those come with steel bezels. But uh, yeah, spend the, how much did I pay for this? 40 bucks. And you can get a ceramic bezel that I think looks very handsome on this watch. I was also surprised that this piece was so well finished. If you watched my SRPC93 uh, review that I had out, I was disappointed that in between the lugs they didn't bother really finishing the case to the same standard as the rest of the case. Uh, here you can see it is, oh, I can't, yeah, there we go. You can see that it's nicely brushed to kind of match the case back. And the shape of this case I think is very, very pleasing got this uh, cushion shape, uh, these nice sloping lugs that actually curve down a bit, which makes the uh, 44 millimeters even more comfortable. And then you've got this really awesome case back. And I was also surprised by this. It's brushed kind of roughly. It's not a fine brushing and it's deep stamped with this Cyrillic and I cannot read Cyrillic, so I couldn't even guess what this says other than the 200 meters that I can read but it really gives it this rugged feel and that's kind of exactly what I wanted. The bracelet that this watch comes with, it's this, uh, it's a polished steel bracelet that feels really chintzy. I mean, I, I picked it up and pretty much immediately discarded it. And like a lot of my watches, I've got it now on this Milanese mesh and I think it looks pretty great. Now something that is kind of a trademark of the Amphibia line is the way that the case works. So rather than the case back screwing in like you have on say a Submariner or a Seamaster, um, it, it kind of works like a canning jar, at least that's how I understand it. So you have the case back that is kind of, it just uh, sits on there and then you've got this ring that screws in and as it screws into the threads, it pushes, the case, it, it pushes the case back flush with a gasket. And the benefit of that is twofold. So the first is that you don't get any shear force on the gasket when you're closing the case. And that's always an issue with, uh, if you've ever changed batteries on a diver, you've got a, an O-ring or a gasket back there and you have to make sure it's lightly lubed with uh, silicone grease. 
Otherwise, you risk uh, potentially tearing the gasket as you screw it in, as the steel kind of shears against the gasket, and that obviously can adversely affect your waterproofness of the watch. Whereas with this case, though, you don't need to worry about it. The gasket, as long as you don't see any visible tears in the gasket and it's intact, you can just pop that case back back on and screw it in. So that is really cool and kind of ingenious. The second feature is uh, that because uh, it's flush against the gasket and this ring really just kind of holds it in place, uh, you can exert more pressure on the case back, and the more pressure you exert on the case back, case back, the tighter the seal with the, with the gasket will be. So that means the deeper you go underwater, the uh, tighter, or the deeper you go underwater, the more pressure will be exerted on the case back, and the the tighter the seal will be. So it actually gets more waterproof the deeper you go, which is kind of ingenious. It works similar to a compressor case. And similarly, this crystal, it's a, it's a lucite crystal. So I, I believe it's an acrylic crystal, but it's three millimeters thick. It's, it's like twice as thick as your standard crystal uh, that, that came out around the 60s. And the reason for that is it works similarly to the case back in that as you go deeper, the pressure pushes against the crystal that you can see is slightly domed and it actually causes the crystal to kind of flatten a bit. And as it flattens, it pushes tighter around the gasket, around the case. So the deeper you go, the tighter the case back gets and the tighter the crystal gets and the better your seal is. So this is a dive watch that has been tried and tested and can actually make it down to 200 meters and beyond. So check out some other YouTube videos. It's kind of amazing. Um, these watches don't leak. It, it's very rare that you see an amphibia that will leak. And I think that's amazing for a watch under $100. And the history is kind of fascinating too. I mean, this is kind of the epitome of Soviet Union technology. I mean, the history is that back in the 60s, when the world's militaries were using you know, Blancpain 50 Fathoms or Submariners or Omega Seamasters, uh, the Soviets couldn't afford that kind of watch and they also didn't want to be using watches from the West. So they tasked, uh, I forget their names, but these two scientists with developing a watch that could do the same thing for much cheaper and that was more foolproof. So I like to think of this as sort of like the AK-47 of dive watches, and I think that's pretty cool. Another interesting feature that I think is kind of ingenious, but also kind of annoying in this case, is the crown. So a lot of people, when they get this amphibia, they'll unscrew the crown, and it is a screw down crown, and then once they get it off, they kind of freak out because they're like, wait, this crown is loose. It's kind of flopping all over the place. and that is actually on purpose, and the way the crown works is uh, you actually have to pull against it to engage the gears, and then once the gears are engaged, then you can change the time, or then you can hand wind the watch. And the reason for that is they wanted it such that if the crown was screwed in, as in not pulled out, if the crown was screwed in, that it wasn't engaged with the rest of the movement, and that effectively um, help to maintain the waterproofness of the watch because the, the crown uh, couldn't be knocked to uh, cause the gasket to fail, which is why a lot of crowns screw down in other watches. Um, and it also reduced the, the potential of knocking your watch against something, having the shock translate through the crown down the stem into the movement because the crown was disconnected from the movement. Pretty ingenious. I, I haven't seen this kind of mechanism on any other watch. But the annoying part is, it's kind of hard to use. So you have to kind of pull it out and then it's, it's a little bit hard to, to turn. Uh, same with your setting, when you're setting the time, same thing, you gotta pull it out and then kind of push it out of the way and then twist it and that's how you set the time. Another thing I don't like about this watch, the movement is automatic, but it doesn't have a quick set date feature. And that's something that I, I didn't even think about when I bought the watch. Uh, and it's something I will never take for granted again. So the way you have to set the date forwards in this watch is you move the hands to 12 a.m. to change the date, and then you reverse the hands back to like 8 p.m. 
and then you turn the hands again back to 12 a.m. and you do this until you reach the date that you want. So if it's the 30th of the month and the watch says the first, like it does here, you gotta do that 30 times and that's just, it's kind of inconvenient. Um, I mean, for me, it was reason enough to pick up my watch, look at the date and think, ah, I'll wait a couple of weeks until <laughs> it gets a little bit closer to today's date so that I don't need to do that 30 times. But for the money, I can't complain and uh, the mechanism is cool. So, uh, I mean, it's a trade-off. But I, I do like how cool that mechanism is and how kind of ingenious the technology is. So something else you noticed, probably, I've got the scuba dude on my dial. And the first time I saw the scuba dude, I thought, what a stupid dial. Uh, maybe I'd like it if I were five years old, but uh, I'm not gonna buy that. And then I decided, you know what? Everybody suggests that I get the scuba dude. So I am going to get the scuba dude. And I am so, so happy I did. Cause that scuba dude is awesome. It, it just, it, it feels more authentic and it's just, it's very unique. And it kind of makes me happy when I put the watch on. It's not too serious. Even though this is a serious dive watch, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Also on this dial, the applied indices are a nice touch. They're not exactly thick, but they're still applied, which is kind of a niggle that I found with say the SKX 007. Uh, I didn't enjoy that, you know, the, the indices were just painted on. But unlike the SKX 007 as well, the loom on here is pretty, pretty terrible. Uh, when you, I mean, if you shine a light on it, it shines bright, the, it glows brightly for maybe 10 seconds and then it dissipates pretty quickly and then within a couple of minutes it's gone. So definitely not Lumi bright. Uh, you guys can take a look later. But I, I guess it works. And then this metallic look on the dial is really cool. Uh, I, I like it because it the dial in conjunction with the hands, it just feels like it's from another era. It almost feels like I bought a new old stock watch, and I think that's really cool, but uh, it doesn't have the same kind of depth that a modern watch would have. So this dial can either be a pro or con, depending on how you look at it. I, I personally like it, but I know a lot of people that probably wouldn't. And then these hands, and this is, I think, a criticism that a lot of people have on the Amphibia. I think the hands are a little bit too short. Uh, it's a little hard to see in this light, I apologize. But yeah, it just looks to me like the hands are a little too short. So as I mentioned, it's a Russian movement in here. It's the 2416. It's a movement with a 31 hour power reserve. Uh, it's not the best, but it works. At least you can hand wind this movement, which is more than I can say of, say, the 7S26. And according to Vostok, it's got a 10 year service interval, which is kind of awesome that they. Uh, it just built well enough and lubricated well enough that it can last 10 years according to the factory without uh, maintenance and it, it kind of supports my theory that this is like the AK-47 of watches but my biggest criticism of this movement it's not that accurate and I have complained about the Seiko 7S26 getting maybe 12 to 15 seconds fast today this has been running like 28 seconds fast today. And that is supposedly well within Vostok specs. So uh, <laughs> it's not the most accurate movement in the world. But because it's roughly 30 seconds fast, I just know that every couple days I set the, the watch back a minute and then I'm back in business. So not it's not horrible.
all in all, I would say this is a really cool watch to own. I got stuck. This is a really cool watch to own. But I would qualify that by saying this is probably not a good first automatic watch to own. For that, I would say go with a Seiko 5 or a Seiko SKX 007 or anything with an ETA 2024 or 2836 just because they're a little bit more straightforward, a little bit uh, more bulletproof, they're serviceable, and uh, there's certain features of this watch that I mentioned that might turn some people off, especially if they're used to you know, the super polished, super accurate uh, $20 quartz watches that you can buy these days. But if you already have an automatic or two and you appreciate the engineering behind it, then this is definitely a watch that I think you would enjoy. And at the end of the day, the history is cool. Uh, the case in crystal is really ingenious. And it's been to space. I mean, other than the Casio G-Shock DW5600, I don't know where else you can get a watch model that's been to space for under a hundred bucks. Yeah, so this uh, Vostok Amphibia, really cool piece. And uh, I think you should definitely pick one up. All right, well, let's do a quick loom shot. Sorry about that. One thing I totally forgot to do, I didn't give you guys a shot on wrist. So before I do that, I will do a wrist check today. I've got my Seiko SRPC39. Really cool watch, fits really well. Really great fit and finish. I'll do a review on this watch at a later date. But let's uh, let's check out this Vostok on wrist. As I mentioned, it's got a 46 millimeter lug to lug. I've got roughly 7.9 inch wrists or 7.95 inch. Oh, sorry, 6.95 inches. So let's just say seven inch. I've got seven inch wrists, and that 46 millimeter lug to lug is pretty fantastic. It works great. And despite having a diameter of 44 millimeters, it actually wears smaller than you would think for 44 millimeters. And I think that totally works. And then another thing I forgot to mention, I've forgotten tons of things in this review. Uh, the dial, uh, sorry, the bezel is not unidirectional. It's bi-directional and it doesn't click. So it just kind of moves. But I, I like it if you're OCD like me, it means that this top arrow will always line up with 12 o'clock. So pro and con, I guess, which uh, seems to sum up this watch pretty well. All right, let's, uh, let's do a loom shot. Well, here we are with the loom test of the Vostok Amphibia. Uh, on the left, I've got my Seiko SKX 007 as the benchmark, and then in the center, I've got that Vostok Amphibia. And you can see the loom is really, really not that good. So let's charge it up with my UV flashlight. So I'll do the, the Vostok first. All right, there you go. So it looks all right, but then let's try firing up the SKX 007. And you can see the difference. It's a pretty marked difference. And you can see the Vostok is already starting to fade. Yeah, so the loom is not too good and <laughs> it's already starting to disappear. You can see, the, well, you can barely see it in the camera. But uh, there you have it. I guess it has a loom, it's just not very functional loom. Well, Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.